So we are still going to have to do some factoring, but then we're also going to have to often create a common denominator in order to finish the problem. So first thing I want to do here is go ahead and factor the denominators if possible. The first fraction is there's nothing to do, but the second fraction, how could you factor the denominator? It would be the x minus 1 and x plus 1. Good. So then if we need a common denominator, what is our LCD going to be here? x minus 1, x plus 1. Good. So the second fraction already has that, but what is the first fraction missing that it doesn't have in the denominator? It's missing the x minus 1. Mm -hmm. So if we have to multiply the denominator by x minus 1, that means we also have to multiply the numerator by x minus 1, right? Because really you want to multiply the fraction by 1. So whatever you do on the bottom, you have to also do on the top. Okay? Yep. So then we can distribute the 2. So what do you get when you distribute the 2? Two? Uh, 2x minus 2. Good. And then we can actually combine it all into one fraction since now we have the same denominator. So just minus x, right? We can lump it all together all over that common denominator that we now have, x minus 1, x plus 1. And these are the same rules we would use, right? If we were dealing with numbers, just like I showed you when we were simplifying earlier, it's the same rules we would use with just numbers. So I mean, if we were doing like one half plus one third, right? The way to do it would be get a common denominator of six. So you'd end up multiplying the first fraction by three over three, the second fraction by two over two, and you would get three from the first fraction, two from the second fraction. Each year denominators is now six, so you keep the denominator the same. And then that would be your answer, right? So we're doing uh -huh. the same process just with variables. Okay. Okay. So now we do have 2x minus x. What does that give us? X. X. Mm -hmm. So then that ends up being our answer. X minus 2 over x minus 1 times x plus 1. So what do we need to do first in number 16? Oh, you do have to check at the end, by the way, to make sure nothing simplifies or nothing cancels out, but nothing does here, but it could happen in some of the problems where there is okay. something that needs to be canceled out. Okay, so what would you do first here? Uh, I would factor that the squared. What do you mean well, by that? You'd find the LCD, mm -hmm. but that one's squared, so the LCD would be that the x plus 8 twice. Yes. So you could write it as squared or you could absolutely write it twice either way. So the second fraction's already set. What does the first fraction need in the denominator? It needs another x plus 8. Good. And then whatever you do in the bottom, you also have to do in the, the top. The top, right? So what is x plus 8 times 1? x plus 8. Mm -hmm. And then from the next fraction, you have a minus 4, right? Mm -hmm. All over your common denominator, x plus 8 squared. So what is x plus 8 minus 4? Uh, x plus 4. There's one more of these. Yes. What would your LCD be here? Um, B minus two. Would it be a 7v and a v minus 2? Exactly. You have to include all of it. Very good. So what is the first fraction missing that it needs to have in the denominator? Uh, v minus 2. Mm -hmm. And then what is the second fraction missing that it needs in the denominator? 7v. Good. OK, so what is 5 times v minus 2? Uh, it would be 5v. Minus 10. 
John. Plus what? Uh, plus 14B. Mm -hmm. All over? All over the 7B times V minus 2. Okay, and then last but not least, if we combine like terms, what do we get? Uh, 19V minus 10. Mm -hmm. All over the denominator. 